All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Veg Networking, where vegan plant-based entrepreneurs connect and collaborate. Bear with us as we go through a lengthy intro for today's special guest. So today's special guest is a husband and father to two handsome young boys and a beautiful little girl. He is a retired Canadian Football League linebacker, former first round CFL draft pick, fourth overall, by the BC Lions in 2009, playing four seasons with the Lions and winning the Grey Cup with them in 2011. He also played four seasons with the Toronto Argonauts, earning the Jake Goddard Veterans Trophy in 2014. Transitioning from sports to a worldwide e-commerce business, he founded Wuxley Movement with his best friend and Toronto tailor, Anthony DiBartolo. Wuxley's origins were born from, a spe- from our special guest, making a jacket for his Brazilian girlfriend at the time, now wife, And that's right, not giving her his jacket, but actually making one for her. From there, the business launched a wildly successful Kickstarter campaign, providing consumers with unparalleled warmth and a military-grade synthetic insulation technology licensed only to select companies worldwide. Wuxley is Canadian-made, animal-friendly, and and ethically sourced. Put your hands together and help us welcome the CEO of Wuxley Movement, James Yurchuk. Hey, my man. Thank you, Justin. appreciate that intro. Welcome. We're so happy you're here. Hey, so uh, so happy to be here virtually, and hopefully I'm there in, in person soon. I, you know, I love uh, Vancouver for my days there, and so, you know, certainly a special connection. Uh you know, certainly love attending uh, the, the Veg Expo whenever we can make it over there. Um, and, you know, I've uh, Helen's my friend. So, uh, you know, it's good seeing you all. Beautiful. Well, we have eight conversation starters that we're going to go through to learn a little bit more about your story and your business. And the first one is on the plant-based vegan uh, topic. So when it comes to origin stories for you centered around plant-based veganism, what does that look like? Yeah, I guess it's kind of just um, like from the household I grew up with, like, uh, you know, my brother's always been like an inspiration uh, to me. And, you know, he's always been like an environmental kind of guy, Um, you know, just to give you some perspective, his email, I think up till last year was his name's Fred. uh, And his at handle was at respectnature.com. So, uh, you know, he's a guy I always looked up to. And then like my mom, you know, she, uh, we had dogs, we, we recycled, um, you know, we composted and then we just had that respect for animals and, you know, always just uh, love watching my uh, BBC Earth and all the nature videos. And, you know, when it came to, you know, harming animals, we, you know, my mom would, you know, take out spiders with a napkin outside. And so, you know, that, that kind of uh, was like my early beginnings and my love towards animals. And then um, when, when uh when it came to this business it it kind of we wanted to reflect that as well and so you know i wanted to do something made in canada but we we have the country has always kind of turned to fur and down and and i wanted to bring another perspective out there and and uh something that you know not only just met the mark but was better and so you know that's been our quest here at Wexley movement Wonderful. Yeah. And that's a, that's a nice segue into the next one, which is uh, what is your um, entrepreneurial origin story? And I'm always fascinated by talking with athletes because I find that there's such a alignment with athletes and entrepreneurs in terms of grit, determination, hard work, patience, all the things that it takes. So is Wuxley, is Wuxley your origin story to entrepreneurship or was there something previous? Yeah. You know, I guess there might've been like uh, some little, hustles here and there uh growing up but um you know you know whether it's you know you know uh making signs and you know delivering it to all the neighbors you can cut their grass for 20 bucks or whatever it was and uh putting all those advertising out you know just uh you know trying to trying to find a way to uh spur up some business but uh i think uh yeah with with football it's it's certainly given me like all my you know, my basis and, and, you know, a lot of my business acumen, I transfer from, from football and, and, you know, 
it's a whole organization within a football team, like, you know, starting from the GM, the head coach, assistant coaches, positional coaches, players, and then, you know, all the supporting staff. And, and, you know, it's, um, it doesn't matter if you're cutting the checks or cutting the grass, everyone's uh, important on a football team. And, you know, we kind of bring those values over to Wuxley because, uh, you know, everyone's so important on this team as well. And, um, you know, I guess uh, another like big inspiration was just watching uh, Dragon's Den, which everyone's seen here in Canada and, you know, watching those shows every week. And I always found the, the story so interesting and compelling. And, and you know, it's, it's been a real good outlet for me transitioning from sports where, you know, you're playing professional sport. Everyone, that's your identity. That's your passion. That's what you've been driving for for the last, you know, 10, 15 years of your life. But, but um, you know, I was able to turn to this and be equally as passionate, equally as uh, engaged and, and uh, really, you know, start the next phase of my life. So it's been a, you know, I'd say it's been an organic transition and, and you know, both, both spots were, were awesome. And, you know, I'm, and I've been in spot and I've been in positions where, you know, I'm an employee and I, I found that awesome too. So it's just, you know, just another stage of life. And it's, uh, I'm having fun with it. Yeah, it, it definitely comes across. That's for sure. And uh, I was just busy writing, writing, a. I, I love taking ad hoc random quotes from people. And I don't know if anybody's ever quoted you on this before, but it's quite powerful that it doesn't matter if you're cutting the checks or cutting the grass, everybody's important on a football team. I think that that's <laughs> such a, such a insight into probably how you lead the Wuxley movement and the team. So that's, that's, that's great. Um, <laughs> So when it when it comes to e-commerce retail uh, apparel as the industry, yeah. what are some trends that you've been noticing? Yeah, no, uh, a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, with retail right now, um, you know, I'd say as as a country, as like all of North America, we've uh, we're talking about it on our team yesterday. Um, the digital age has accelerated five years in one year, all because of COVID. And, uh, you know, uh, every, you, you got to be able to cater uh, to people online. Uh, you know, there, there obviously isn't people walking through the malls like they used to. And, you know, especially out here in Ontario where, you know, it's been shut down during our prime season. And so, like, you, you know, you really have to have foresight. And, you know, there's, there's just more more and more layers to run a retail business. Now you got to be able to set up for virtual appointments, uh, curbside pickups, but, um, you know, as people aren't walking in malls and walking by your product or store, um, you know, they're a lot of that times in their phone or their computer. And so you got to find uh, creative ways to, you know, engage the, the, the community and, and, and these people through, uh, you know, some people are doing digital ads and that we all see on our phones and, uh, but, you know, getting good spotlights and some of the, the PR pieces help. And, you know, was, you got to hit all these buckets and it's so much these days. But, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, you know, we're trying to push at all angles here and, and uh, take the brand to the promised land. Yeah. Is it safe to say then that you were likely ahead of the curve, ahead of the eight ball when it comes to the way that you distributed your product via e-commerce? Or was yeah. that a shift for you guys? Yeah, no, that was, uh, that was, you know, we really had to accelerate it. Uh, and, uh, you know, luckily we were, we were doing it online. So that was our bread and butter to begin with. So, but now we, you know, we had to like shift a lot more resources and, you know, put, put more investment there. And like, you know, uh, I know, you know, some business has been hit really hard and there's really nothing that they can do. Uh, luckily, our product, you know, people are still wanting to get outside and get outside even more. Uh, and so, you know, jackets, you know, not only a want out here, it's you got to have it in Canada. And so, um, you know, we've we've been able to, you know, stay stay in relatively good position with that. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that, you know, it's the brand right now is Wuxley Movement. Before that, it was Wooly. And in reading, I understand that the, the Wooly brand just did not represent your uh, animal-friendly, ethically sourced lens. And so you put the X in there to kind of differentiate yourself. And I could be wrong, but I think there was even a, a, a brand named before Wooly. Um, but anyways, I digress. The reason I'm bringing this all up is because 
I, like everybody here, uh, and I'm sure yourself, are very fascinated by where are our colleagues and peers going in the future? Like we're of course interested where they are now, but where are they going in the future? So that's the next question is where is Wuxley going in the future? Yeah, no, I, th I think uh, we're, we're really doubling down on like all our roots and um, you know, what we say, like warmth is our, our North star. It's a, it's our connecting factor, our, you know, our we're like a bridge brand and, and, you know, we're really trying to get uh, whether people are animal friendly or just want like a good, nice quality coat, we want them engaged with our brand. And, and uh, you know, we're, we're doubling down on our and warmth to us is, is more than just like a jacket feature. It's, it's the way that we treat the community, the way that we treat the environment animals. And so, you know, we're doubling down in sustainability. We're telling the designers like, Hey, if it doesn't have an eco-friendly factor to it, um, if the fabric, the, the insulation, a liner, a trim, um, you know, don't put, we can't have it in our jacket. So don't even look at it. Like we, you know, it's a lot more challenging. We put a lot more pressure on it. They're up for it though. Um, and, you know, this, our hypothesis is, you know, this, this is what luxury is going to be. Um, you know, people are going to want, I want the best, not only best product, but what's doing the best for the world. And, and so we're doubling down on that. Um, and it's a big challenge because there's sometimes 30, 40 components within a jacket. So we're looking at uh, biodegradable op options, uh, recycled options are getting real uh, popular out there. Uh, we have grayish options that we're making available. Uh, with that, we're also, you know, looking to engage community and, uh, you know, we're, we're a bootstrap brand. And so we can put a uh, purpose before profit and, you know, we're, we're trying to be forward with a lot of the, um, a lot of the stuff that, or a lot of the um, engagement and, and issues that we're tackling. Uh, you know, we're, we, we just came off like a, a Black History Month campaign that we're very proud of. You know, um, you know, I've, I grew up in a multiracial neighborhood and, and, and now I'm part of an interracial family. And so it's, you know, it's such a important topic for me. And, you know, as we raise our family and, and, uh, you know, just know the importance of all the, of all the history of, of, uh, of people in Canada. Uh, and then we've, uh, you know, of course we, we built this brand with, with like the, the vegan vegetarian community. And so we'll, we'll, we'll continue to, um, you know, serve that, that community loyally till the till the end of time because um, you know they've been so great and been our early adopters and and you mentioned all the different names that that we've had the, that community really knows all all the names because they've been there the whole ride and it didn't seem to matter what our name was they knew who we were and what we we're about and so um, you know we appreciate that and then uh, yeah and, and uh, what else yeah well, like we got some unbelievable stuff going on here. Um, you know, the designs just keep on getting better. The quality keeps on getting better. We're always making it here in Canada. Um, you know, we're, we're building, we're building a lot of momentum. And, and I think uh, I'm excited to see, uh, to show uh, the people this in, in uh, fall 21, because we, we put in a lot of investments uh, this last year, but sometimes it takes about 12, 18 months to kind of kick in. Uh, but, you know, the company is growing and, um, you know, we're, we're going to deliver retail and we're going to be, we're going to try to be at the cutting edge of, of service and warmth and everything we do. So exciting times here. That's exactly why you're the CEO and leader that you are in terms of being a visionary, because when somebody gets asked a question as to where are you going in the future, it can be, it can be pretty ominous to answer, but you just rifled through so much gold there that I'm likely going to go back and rewatch this when it's done and, and pull it apart. And, you mentioned your design team and I just picture when they walk into the room over top of the door, it, it says, we're here for it. Cause you mentioned like, you'll give them so many different things and they're here for it. And I think that that's powerful. And um, as well to um, when we've asked this question about trends or where are people going in the future? Uh, of course, we've had a lot of uh, CPG or food brands uh, entrepreneurs here on veg and, the common thread has been everything that you just mentioned in terms of sustainable, recyclable, uh, biodegradable, and they're looking at it from a package standpoint, but it's funny because a jacket, I guess, is a package too. And so you're looking at it from that lens as well. So absolutely, absolutely gold there. Um, next, next question. And 
in doing a little bit of research uh, before our conversation today, I was able to, to, to spot that uh, 10, I think it was $10 from every coat goes to a uh, fur free charitable organization. I don't know if that's still the case or even if that was the case. The next question is, does Wuxley support any charitable organizations? Yeah, no, uh, thanks for asking that. Like, yeah, we, we, uh, we were doing that. Uh, we've been kind of rotating our uh, different, um, you know, different uh, causes, I would say. Yeah, so um, yeah, we certainly, we did that one for a while. I we had a partnership for the, uh, with the fair, fur bearers out there in BC. Um, and then uh, we've, we donated to um, a, uh, a local food bank here in, in Toronto. Um, we supported them uh, through the, the month of December. We uh, we also don't on November twelfth, uh, the day after uh, Remembrance Day, uh, one hundred percent of sales we gave to um, the the Legion, the local Legion here um, for the um, in respect of all the the services of um, of our of our troops and uh, and then we've we've also we also have a trade up program as well. Um, where people can uh, pass in their, their fur and down jackets and, and we get those out to the, the homeless communities in, um, around Toronto primarily and, and Winnipeg. And so, you know, we're, we're touching on a little, uh, a little bit. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've asked our team, to, you know, we, that's something that we, we want to accelerate as we talk of our vision. Like, you know, it's a big part of our, our um, of our brand. And, and so, we're going to accelerate that, I think, in, in, in this year and, and continue to uh, make that at the forefront of, of what we do. So, yeah, once again, more, more than expected. So it's been animal welfare, food and security, veterans affairs, and then essentially disenfranchised folks uh, who just have been dealt a, a terrible card. Um, wow. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, Next question, uh, and I'm. I, this is one of my favorite questions that we ask everybody because it's it's one where people can watch it back, take some notes, and really, uh, it's a really action item based question. And it is: Are there any books, apps, and or podcasts that you find have helped you become the leader that you are today as an entrepreneur? Yeah, like um, so, like our our brand mantra is is live warm. Uh, and, you know, I, I kind of explained that earlier, you know, living warm in our jack, but living warm with, with everybody in, every, in everyday life. And, uh, you know, one of, one of the big influence, and in, it's kind of been an entrepreneurial book, is uh, how to win friends and influence uh, people. And, and, uh, and I think, you know, I, they, they came with like this, uh, such a positive approach. I found that I, that I tried to uh, instill in the culture here at Wuxley and, and hopefully that reverberates through everything we do, the jackets we make, through the, the way we, uh, you know, our client services. And, and so, you know, I think that's where the premise of warmth really came from. And, and we try to stick to that uh, positivity. Absolutely. And as, as an athlete, are you finding any, uh, are there any apps on your phone that help you with uh, I don't know, like mental health, sleep. Is there, is there anything like that, or maybe some podcasts that you find help help stir things up for you? Yeah, you know what? Um, I just I like uh, listening to some music and stuff more than than the, the apps. I don't get too too much uh, windshield time to to listen to the podcasts. And you know, with uh, three little ones at home, you can imagine there's not not much time there either. So, you know, I I think I you know I listen to you know some good good music and uh, I love like just listening to like uh, the local radio station like Q107 every morning and I don't know it just takes me to like a different time I I have like a 1970s radio that I that I have in my house and like everything else is modern stuff like this old radio my wife doesn't really like it too much but I just like it and like it crackles a little bit and you know it takes it takes you to a time when we didn't have to wear masks everywhere and uh, and you know some classic rock music. All right, rock on, rock on. Um, so, in terms of inspiration, um, are there any other brands that just have or continue to stick out to you as 
leading the pack and brands that you personally love to support, whether it's food, fashion, whatever it might be? Yeah, you know, um, you know, I think I think I take, uh, you know, bits and pieces from from uh, every brand, and like even competitors, you know, I, you know, even though I don't agree with with all the things that they do, like, you know, I, I the, you know, each brand to, to get to the position that they've, they've been in, um, you know, they've, they've shown, you know, certain signs of excellence, and, and you got to respect that too. And so, um, you know, uh, if there's, if, you know, it's it's more of a like I said, it's more of taking bits and pieces uh, from from various brands that I think um, you know create inspiration. You know, like uh, you know, Matt and that's you know is one of the the great brands here that's you know designed in Canada. Um, you know, they've they've done they've taken like you know a very holistic holistic approach um, with their with their animal friendly approach um, with their animal friendly bags primarily and you know I think they've done a great job um you know there's there's some uh, a lot of Canadian brands where like um they're, they're doing Canadian manufacturing that I respect and and you know I, I like to support those brands as well because I know the struggle what it is to make something in Canada it's so much uh so much more challenging to than to to go overseas and uh and so you know those those are uh, some of the inspirational brands, like pretty much anyone that's making in Canada. I'm, I'm like, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And for those who don't know, and I could be wrong, is the inside of the Wuxley coats, Wuxley jackets still plaid as an ode to Canada? Is that continuing? Yeah, yeah. We've been rocking the plaid. Uh, you know, it looks like a, a Muskoka dinner table, they say. And uh you know, we try to get away with it, but then like, you know, the people flooded us with messages. They're like, no, bring it back. And so, you know, we got to listen to the community. That's what they like. And, and uh, you know, so it's, it's a staple within the brand. Okay. Yeah. And I know that the the drop has already happened for the 2021 line. And I, I was listening, whether it was last week or the week before, listening to you on the Animal Justice Academy uh, talk about... Uh, Again, it was more in tune of where the brand is going. And I think your language was something to the tune of keep on, keep your ears out because we're going to be doing an uppercut to the, to the industry who's not ethically sourced and animal friendly and whatnot. But uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll leave that to the end <laughs> yeah. for you here. So, um, okay, James, our last one, eight of eight here is always prefaced by saying we are asking for it. So please don't feel the need to be uh, humble. Uh, by any means here, uh, our last one is what, if any, pieces of advice do you have for business owners and entrepreneurs, whether just starting or well-seasoned like yourself? Yeah, um, you know, I'd say, you know, whatever you're getting into, uh, you know, make sure that you're, you have a passion for it um, because, you know, it's, it's, it's a roller coaster ride, uh, whether, you know, it's it's never even keel you're gonna have upper and lower days but like you know the the passion will keep you driven on the on the lower days um you know for some of the newer entrepreneurs you know um i'd say like take mitigated risks along the way rather than you know mortgaging the house and trying to start a new business maybe you know continue a full-time job and you know work five ten hours on it on the side and you know, as you see uh, momentum and, and, and success, then you can, you know, take, you know, more elevated risks. And, and, you know, if you continue with that pattern, you know, hopefully um, it's something that you can transition to if that's what your goal is. And, and uh, you know, uh, I, I'm repeating some of the stuff from the animal justice talk a couple of weeks ago, but uh, I'm a big believer in business plans and, and, you know, helps, helps align my thoughts and, and, you know, if you have a couple other people helping you, you can help align the group when it's kind of set out there in paper a little bit sometimes. So, so you know, there's a few timbits that uh, that help me out, but you know, it's certainly a topic that I could, uh, you know, I could go on about all day. But I know that I know that we're, there's a you know big conversation happen after this. Yeah, and to that point, I, I foresee some some things popping off in the future where there are some summits for entrepreneurs or business owners where that is the focus of the yeah where that is the focus of the conversation and and steering people in that direction. And one one piece of advice that you had uh, 
had had shared with everybody, not in that last question, but throughout this conversation today, I believe, as I heard, was community in the turn in the context of asking and listening to customers. And we and we've heard yeah. that before, like really having a pulse on what's going on within your community, I think is also some advice that you'd like to share. So well, James, it's it's been an absolute honor and pleasure to have this conversation with you today. And as we do with all special guests, we end by giving the floor to you in the event that there was anything missed and anything that you would like to share further. Yeah, no, uh, really appreciate it, Justin. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess uh, the passion was really coming through with uh, the other week with with the uppercut. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's be ready for it. Um, you know, we're looking to to really make a mark in this industry and and rethink and re re uh, reimagine the way that we deliver outerwear to not only to Canada but all over the world and. And, you know, we have such a great reputation of making uh, Canadian made jackets. It's like a, a Swiss watch or Italian suit. No one does it better by, than, a Cana uh, than the Canadians. Uh, and so we are going to do our best to make everybody proud um, that what the Wuxley brand is from Canada and making here in Canada. So really appreciate the time and highlighting me today um, and highlighting the brand and, uh, you know, look forward to hanging out with you guys when uh, I get to Vancouver next. Can't wait to get to the, the Veg, Veg Expo. And uh, Helen is looking great there in her bomber jacket by Wuxley. This this jacket, what, what I loved about Wuxley is when we were um, working together previously, um, um, our, our other member, Velasquez, my husband, he's a big guy. And to find a winter jacket for him is very, very difficult. There's no sizes at winters. Otherwise, you end up with these large tents. And um, when we ordered this Wuxley for him, it is a 2XL. And it actually was a little big. And he was shocked. And it is so hot that, like, literally, he'll have a T-shirt, his hoodie. He'll throw this on because it's snowing here. He doesn't even get the door open. He's like, too hot. Everything. Uh -huh. Just, just to the T-shirt with the Wuxley and then out the door. So this, like, this is, like, Antarctic level heating system and it's so big that I can put it on and be like an igloo inside of it like it is so much <laughs> I love it that's that that's that proprietary special uh military grade insulation that you're experiencing right there Helen so uh for everybody here today and those who are going to be listening uh, on the replay afterwards you can find Wuxley movement on the web at www.wuxley w-u-x-l-y wuxley.com and on instagram at wuxley movement and take a close look when you do check out the website or their their brand on instagram uh when it when it does say wuxley movement you're going to notice for the vegans out there a nice uh a nice little surprise in the o in movement uh, i'll leave that for you to decipher so thank you so much james pleasure hey thanks so much you guys have a great rest of the day Ooh.